Hello, people of the internet. Uh, it's Jan Beta, and I got this as a donation um, together with um, two other um, compact Macs that I'm gonna restore over the next uh, next few months, I guess, because it's um, it's not easy to restore these. Basically, there's a lot to do. Um, this is a Macintosh SE30. And it has a 68K30 uh, Motorola processor in it um, and a hard disk and stuff like that. These are, um, for many people, the, the, um, the most loved of these um, compact Macs with the um, black and white screen at least. Um, the early compact Macs because it has so many features. It has a faster processor. You can um, add a lot of RAM. Um, yeah. Basically, this is a pretty nice machine, and uh, sadly, these are notorious uh, to fail because um, just like uh, the Amiga 1200 and 600, they have these um, SMD electrolytic capacitors on the um, on the circuit board that uh, tend to leak, and these also additionally have a battery that is uh, very prone to um, leaking and exploding and stuff and uh, corroding the contacts so um, I haven't even ordered um, capacitors replacement capacitors yet um, but I want to take a look inside uh, and see if there's any damage before I even try to power this on um, the state of this is it's pretty dirty but otherwise it seems quite nice it's not even very yellow um, it's a bit yellow from this side has this um, reset switch, which I should remove before I open this. Uh, it's basically... Wow, okay. This is just... Uh, it snaps in there and has these little protruding things that reach the buttons uh, beneath there. <laughs> That's quite convenient that there's a white spot there. Um, there are buttons on the main board that uh, have reset and uh, um, interrupt, I believe. Um, so you can't normally reach them from the outside, but these little switches were made so you can reach them. So this uh, opens by removing four screws. Two are here and two are in the handle here. So you need a pretty long screwdriver. Uh, let me show you what I came up with to open these. So if you look very closely, you can see just on the top there, there's one, the other one's in the shade, but um, the screws are way, way down inside there. Um, so you need a long screwdriver. Normally you get um, special screwdrivers. It's a Torx uh, 15. Uh, there are screwdrivers uh, on the market to, for just this job, uh, but I found that I can use my iFixit uh, set of screwdrivers and will just fit in there. So here's a, this is my iFixit screwdriver and I can just reach the screw and get in there and remove it. So, and then you can basically just pull this off. Ta da! So, and here's what these look from the inside. There's our hard disk. Um, this part's pretty brittle. The, um, the end of the monitor here, of the CRT tube. A um, little fan. The analog board that. Um, is responsible for the voltages for the screen. Um, there's a little uh, power brick that is uh, its own unit in this um, Macintosh. Um, for the older versions of the of the um, Compact Max, it's on the analog board. There's the power supply for the um, logic board and stuff. And down there, on the bottom of the case, is the logic board. You have to remove the power connector and the hard disk connector and the disk drive to connector. Uh, 
And I believe there's also the um, connector for the speaker that is somewhere in the front there. Uh, yeah, you have to remove these to get the board out. Let me show you how I think I can do this. So there's a little shielding. So inside there, the the connector with the um, rainbow colored cables coming from it that goes to the analog board um, or the, the power adapter here. Um, I have to remove that to get the, the board out, I think. And it's clipped in place with a little um, locking mechanism, so it's not easy. I have to get in there, which is very close, and I don't want to break off the end of the tube there. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll try this. Oh, there we go. It just came off. There's just one little um, a hook that goes like this on the other side, and you have to press it down, and it releases, and then you can pull at the same time. That was pretty easy. Easier than I thought. And now I think I can just um, slide this off on this side here. There are those indentations. And yeah, there's another cable. The brown one there for the speaker. Okay, so here's the, the logic board after I pulled it out. It's a bit, a bit bent here. I don't know why. Um, yeah, and basically these are the little um, electrolytic surface mount caps. They are all the same. I think they are all um, 47 microfarads on here. And uh, the little one is a one microfarad one. I have these on order, so I'm gonna um, replace all of those and I think I'm also going to replace um, the through hole um, actual caps here um, and very important removing the battery is also very important but it appears that this board is in pretty good um, shape I don't see any major corrosion there's there's some parts like here where it appears there's some green spots on the board and stuff like that but nothing major no damaged traces and stuff yeah so um i might get lucky with this board and it, it might just work so uh yeah what i'm gonna do first is to remove the battery i think i just love these old motorola um 68k processors with the gold uh, finish there. I have um, an equivalent one that's uh, I think it's it's um, a 50 megahertz one. This is a 25 megahertz one if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't say. 16 megahertz I believe. Yeah it's a 16 megahertz one. Um, yeah uh, the I have one in my Amiga 1200 in the accelerator card as well the faster version of this but it looks uh, similar um this is the the um coprocessor the math coprocessor which is pretty nice uh also 60 megahertz version so um let's remove the battery i believe we can just snap this off and then doesn't seem to have leaked that's pretty pretty unusual i guess no, it seems, seems okay. It's a 3.6 volts lithium battery. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there are um, these chips here particularly have some pretty green legs there. And it's because these um, capacitors have leaked, I believe. So, yeah, I better remove them all together uh, yeah so that's what I'm gonna do next so some of you who watched my Amiga recap video will be very pleased that I um, have one of these now it's a hot air um, station one of the cheap ones but hey it's a hot air station so I can uh, maybe go about and do this a little bit more professionally than I was with my Amiga video uh, where I just I twisted them, the electrolytic caps, and um, they came off the board, which is still 
a method I, I think is uh, totally legit. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try the hot air method now. Okay, got the first one off and uh, yeah, forgot to film it. So let's go on to the next one. <laughs> so let's see, this works pretty well. I hope I don't damage the camera. So, there we go. Just came loose. So you have to, of course, be careful with uh, any plastic parts in the way and stuff. And you can't smell this, but it smells like fish, which is uh, the electrolyte. Okay, let's clean up the board a bit, I guess. One, one pad um, broke off. So one little pad broke off, this one here, which is badly corroded. I think I'm just gonna glue it on there. Glue it back on there with some epoxy. And it should be fine. It's the one on the um, smallest capacitor, so I guess uh, the smallest one has leaked the most. Okay, let's try to clean it off with some sort of wick here. Yeah, and it's all totally corroded under there, so I'm just going to wipe this a bit. Okay. Doesn't look too bad under there, so I think I can maybe glue it back in place with some epoxy. So I don't know if this is going to work. I'm gonna put some epoxy there. And then I'm going to push it down with the epoxy there. To the right spot. Like so. So while this is drying, let me show you what I um, do with the other pads. I add some some soda there, just a bit to have some flux, and then I go about and swipe across there carefully with a bit of soda braid and Works quite well to clean these pads up. Just have to remove the um, residue after that. So, okay, I have to um, snap off these caps as well because there has been leakage in this area here. And that's, I think, it's a sign for this cap might have leaked. Also, so so twenty two. This one. There has been leakage under it, so it was that cap that leaked, most likely. Um. Yeah, didn't clean it up that thoroughly because this one is glued on, and I want to let the the glue dry before before I go wild there. So in this, I suppose this is going through some kind of uh, washing procedure. Anyway, so yeah, to get the remaining uh, protruding 
legs out there, I think I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers and heat them from the other side of the board and then try to get them out there. There are some, I think it's a, at least three layer board and these are, um, the negatives are connected to the ground pane, means they are, it's not easy to solder these. It's not possible to solder these at all. So let's see, this is corroded also, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. With this corrosion, um, the the solder will not will not stick. Yeah, this, these have corroded through the board. Even this is not so nice. So I'm gonna try again. Some more solder added there, and you don't want to pull too hard because you are going to damage the board otherwise. That goes. That was the other one. It was much easier. Well, so this is um, a bit more corroded than I thought, but I think this is um, savable. <laughs> Can save this probably. Hope so. Such a nice computer. So I have all the electrolytic caps uh, removed. I have to clean this board somehow. Um, maybe I'll, I'll try the um, dishwasher trick. I'm not sure about that yet. At least I'm going to use some vinegar and uh, a brush to, to get in there. <laughs> and uh, try to remove most of the corrosion, I guess. It isn't that bad really. I think I can remove some of it or most of it. Might have to replace the little um, chip here, which is, I believe, the, the audio amplifier. We'll see that. If we don't get the starting chime and everything else works, it's going to be the little chip that's too corroded. Oh, that's the corrosion has eaten its way through into the chip, which happens from time to time and then destroys the chip from the inside. Yeah, electronics are horrible kids. That's what they are. Eating, eating from inside, alive. <laughs> so, yeah. So I am going to try um, to do it with some vinegar and uh, scrub it with the toothbrush. And uh, yeah, I'm going to remove all the, the RAM chips, I guess. Because, because. All right, let's try this. Okay, I took this to the kitchen and uh, I have some standard household uh, vinegar and I am going to put some on there. <laughs> oh, that hurts a bit but I hope it helps. So and everywhere. I want to let it soak a bit. So here's the part that was pretty badly corroded, the little audio chip. And as you can see, it's all silvery and shiny again. So I am now carefully um, rinsing off the, the vinegar some water. So I've done some more cleaning and used some contact cleaner on the um, on the buses here. So it's all gonna be hunky dory. Hopefully. So the new caps are here. Ordered some actual through hole stuff and a lot of uh, surface mount stuff. And little surface mount ones. I've got 10 or so because they are only, they cost cents basically. It's going to 
to go in nicely. These are not very good brand uh, caps, but actual caps are actually <laughs> pretty hard to get sometimes. So I think I got these ones that are a bit higher uh, voltage rating. So they should be just fine. So these are the surface mount parts and they are they come in these little strips because they are meant to be um, placed by machines by pick and place machines so they can be transported it's like a little um, like a super 8 uh, tape or something like that film um, with a little perforation on the edges so it can be transported by a machine um, these are not meant to be placed by humans so yeah so and i am starting with the pad that is broken to see if it works using totally usual solder here so I'm tinning the tip because it helps with the heat let's see okay tinned it all right so i tinned one one side of of the cap there. I'm gonna take one. Yeah, this is clearly meant for machines. <laughs> but I ordered enough. So these are 10, I think I only need one, so I can drop quite a few of these. <laughs> and it won't matter. So let's see. There we are, a little part. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's all recapped now, as far as I can see. Um, some isopropanol still on there because I cleaned it a bit afterwards to clean off the flux residue. I think I didn't miss one, did I? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one, one microfarad. 10 times 47 microfarads and one one microfarad one so that's correct that should be all the caps um yeah i'll put it back in the case and test it i'd say fingers crossed okay so us let us test it. Okay, let's turn it on, shall we? Let's see what it does. And it gives the bing. And the screen comes on. And it's a happy Mac. Yes. And it says it doesn't have the right uh, system software. But otherwise, it seems to work. Nice. Okay, so I don't have a mouse or a keyboard, so I can't do anything about this. But all it says is um, the system software is the wrong uh, version, basically. So this looks pretty good. Hey, so look what arrived. Um, hey, you can't see it. I know, I think I know what's in here. Uh, got this ordered just two days ago actually it was pretty fast to arrive so what it is you know what I think it is let's peek inside is a bunch of old newspapers uh, there's actually supposedly there's a keyboard in there 
And I thought there was also a mouse in there. <laughs> so yeah, this is... I uh, got this for, I believe, 7 or 8 euros. So it's just for testing purposes I'm gonna get a proper keyboard. Um, the people I, I got the, the Max from actually are still looking for the keyboards and mice they have somewhere. This is an ADB uh, keyboard and mouse. Uh, Apple design keyboard. It actually doesn't look too bad at all. So, um, except for my, my test still being a, a mess and uh, yeah, there's not, not enough room on my desk for stuff like this, but I'm gonna find a way to do it anyway. This only has one button. So the power switch is for later max, I think. Let's uh, try it, maybe it works. Next it works, and one LED came on there, so a good sign. And there's my pointer, and it's moving. That's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, Macintosh. Yeah, it's, it claims it has the wrong system on the disk. Starting over and over and over and over, but now I can now I can actually uh, click on stuff, which is nice. So and I made a made a uh, supposed to you seven point one, or is it seven point oh one boot disk? I think I can try. So it boots from disk, and I think it works. So that's pretty nice. So here's what we get. Welcome to the Apple Installer. Okay, I'm now installing System 701. It seems. I'm sorry about the the stripes, they are only there on camera. Picture is pretty good otherwise. Um, yeah, the mouse works and the keyboard works. Fortunately, I don't have um, any um, keyboard drivers on there. This is a German keyboard. It has um, the the umlauts, so they are called Ö, R, Ü. These are what makes German sound so good. <laughs> they are um, on here, and yeah, they are not accounted for. They are just it's just the American uh, key map, or the British rather. This is uh, the British version of the <laughs> Mac OS, I don't know why. Um, but you can tell by the trash can being called the waste basket. Yeah, but all in all the, the Mac works um, after I uh, botched a little wire there and cleaned up the, the circuit board a bit more. And uh, yeah, anyway, I think this Video got long enough already. I, there are gonna be more videos on this particular machine, I think. I'm happy that I got it up and running again for now and uh, yeah, so much for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Check out my Patreon, check out my other videos, check out... I'm doing this 
funny things with my hand. Check out my channel and subscribe and like this video and give it a thumbs up and come again. Thanks. Bye. Is it wrong?